Well, Jim, thank you so much. Um, I, I love that that's your background because I, I'm in my favorite workspace. I live in uh, Oak Park. I can actually show the, it's a drawing of mine. So I love to draw and it's a, a poem prayer that I wrote and then I, I drew it. Um, probably the piece I spent the most amount of time on. So I, I'm in, I live in Oak Park and I, I teach at, at Highland Park High School, like you said, and um, in Oak Park, I am I'm in my, I have an old, we have an old home here. I, I'm in the attic, uh, which is like the quietest place in the house. So one thing I want to start by, like part of my workspace is um, earplugs. I have a, uh, an ear condition called hyperacusis where like regular sounds sound louder, they register more loudly. And it makes it really hard to be a teacher because there's like high schools are like just noise machines. And um, so when I'm working, earplugs are really important. Um, the attic is like the furthest away I can get. So all of, I love all the backgrounds that people have with books there. So like our bookshelves are downstairs and my desk here, all the books are like in front of me right now. So I can see them, no one else can see them. So, um, so I think that's, that's an important thing I wanted to share about me. Um, I love like writing for long stretches of time. I, I, have, I have a lot of trouble kind of going in and out. And so I will, I, I need to kind of just separate from people. So I, I used to go out to coffee shops or bookshops a lot to write, but obviously that's not possible anymore. Um, so this is the most isolated place I can get. Uh, some of the books I have around me, um, I, I always, when I'm writing poetry, I always need to have ton of poetry books. And so if I get stuck or if I get lost or something, I'll open up like, you know, Mahmoud Darwish here, uh, Leah Yumansky's The Barbarous Century, Hari Aluri's The Flayed City, and Lee Young Lee's Rose. And I'm just looking at, you know, Dark, Dark Thing by Ashley M. Jones. It's just certain books that I go back to and back to. The Essential Rumi is probably the number one. Um, so if I get stuck, I'll like open up a book and just start reading, or I'll say, I need a word. I'm stuck on a word and I'll just open a book up randomly, drop my finger down. I'm like, I'm gonna use that word somehow in a poem and it keeps things fresh or it helps me get unstuck. I love poetry broadside. So I have two um, signed, Mary Oliver's made my first po favorite poet. And so I have two like signed Mary Oliver broadsides that I keep next to me. I'm gonna read one of them because I think the message um, that this one has is really important. Um, and it's from, from her book, Rules for the Dance. Some of you may know this quotation, but it's, uh, it says, no poet ever wrote a poem to dishonor life, to compromise high ideals, to scorn religious views, to demean hope or gratitude, to argue against tenderness, to place rancor before love or to praise littleness soul, not one, not ever. On the contrary, poets have in freedom and in prison, in health and in misery, with listeners and without listeners, spent their lives examining and glorifying life, meditation, thoughtfulness, devoutness, and human love. They have done this wildly serenely, rhetorically, lyrically, without hope of answer or reward. They have done this grudgingly, willingly, patiently, and in the steams of impatience. They have done it for all in any of the gods of life, and the record of their so doing belongs to each one of us, including you. I love that poem. I love that excerpt. Um, when I think of the independent bookstores in and around Chicago, all over the place, I mean, it's a, it is a very often difficult and thankless. Obviously, there's a lot of gratitude that we're giving them, but a lot of people don't, don't give them the, the love and gratitude and recognition they deserve. I know Sarah's here from Women and Children First. I had one of my two book launches for my book there in 2018. And I remember just reaching out. I'm like, I love your store. I come there all the time. I, I, you know, I lived in Evanston for a long time. And um, it was one of the stores I would go to often. And they wrote back and said, yes, we would love to host a book launch for you. And I, I, I've always been really grateful to them. Uh, the books, the book stall in Winnetka, I did my other book launch over there. So because I teach in Highland Park, that's a close bookstore. I'm in Oak Park. So the, the book table here 
seminary bookseller volume, City Lit, which sadly we had to say goodbye to. Uh, I, I have not been to Centuries and Sleuths, so that's the next bookstore I'm going to visit. So uh, Augie, I'm excited to meet you there. Uh, Bookends and Beginnings in Evanston. I mean, all these places have been really good to authors. And I think that um, the program that we're doing today, especially post as we're like winding out, hopefully, of COVID, is a testament to like how strong these bookstores are, but how much they need us and all of us. And I, I just want to thank all of you who are here. Thank all the bookstores. I know R Roberta, who we're going to hear from, she, the book, the book stall is, is, is your, I mean, I think you're the, like the, the brilliance behind the legacy of uh, the book stall. So thank you, Roberta, as well, for being here. And, and Don, thank you for inviting me. I, I did have a poem I wanted to read, just my own. So I'll do that. It's a short poem called The Forgotten Banana. And I was thinking about, um, Tim O'Brien has a, at the end of the things they carried, he talks about a book that's on the bookshelf that isn't read and how in order for books to, to stay alive, we need to read them. And I'm thinking the same of places where books are. So the fact that bookstores are opening again, um, it's, it's amazing for the books, for the stores. Uh, so this is a forgotten banana. It's the point of view of a banana that's been forgotten in a copy room at, at a school. And I will end with this, the forgotten banana. Perhaps I should feel sad knowing I've become a forgotten fruit, left behind in the gathering darkness of the school copy room. There is solace to be found in the hum of the humidifier, the pulse-like clicks of these massive machines, savoring this rare spell of rest. It is a Friday. And beyond the walls of my epic loneliness, I wonder if anyone is still looking for me, nursing a sweet gut panged hankering for potassium after a long day of teaching and yearning. If someone does claim me, may they be a kind soul, peel away my skin lovingly Enjoy the life I've lived, a life destined not to be a forgotten thing, but something delicious, something good. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Fossil. Just hearing that makes you realize how much you miss being in person with people, reading beautiful words and sharing thoughts. And um, with God's help, we will be open really soon and doing that with all Chicago's bookstores. But thank you for our reminder how important it is to share literature and share thoughts and feelings and words with each other in public. Uh, Fossil's book is The Displaced Children of Displaced Children. So please keep an eye out for that. Order it from an indie bookstore, say one of the ones we've talked about today or any of the nearly 200 that are around Chicago land.